What's up everybody? Hopefully everyone is enjoying their spring break. Hopefully that this video is going to show up pretty well. What I'm doing is I want to kind of do an impromptu introductory lab. Um, it's also something that you'll be able to use to pull up on Blackboard and study from uh, frequently anytime that you want. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a moment just briefly go and review over the muscles of the head, the face, and the neck and the ones we have to know for our exam coming up in a few weeks and then move on to the body and the trunk and try to load these up on blackboard and see how it goes so first thing first we have the head you have uh, a, an aponeurosis which if you remember what the aponeurosis is the aponeurosis is a flat tendon so you have an aponeurosis on top of your head and attached to the front of the aponeurosis is the frontalis. What's really cool about muscles is that they always have a name for a reason. The name can be reference to the shape of the muscle. The name can be reference to what the muscle does. It can be reference to the direction that the fibers are running or it could even be reference to the shape of the muscle and what the muscle actually does. So you have the frontalis which is called the frontalis muscle because he's on top of the frontal bone and then when you turn the head around you have a muscle known as the occipitalis and of course the occipitalis is called that because he's lining on top of the occipital bone so you have the occipitalis which his job is pretty much just to hold your scalp down so when you see people with large wrinkled skin behind their neck and their head that's because they have a weak occipitalis the frontalis on the other hand his job is to actually make a wrinkled forehead and give you the uh, surprise expression that you have on your face when you make the wrinkles on your forehead and when you raise your eyebrows that's the purpose of the frontalis another muscle of the head is the temporo Peritalis. Now, if you listen to his name, temporo, meaning uh, the temple, or better yet, the um, temporal, um, the temporal bone, that's right here, and then peritalis, which means parietal bone. So, between the temporal bone and the parietal bone, that's what this muscle is actually attaching to. And his job is to actually hold down the uh, the scalp and pull it down on both sides. Now, when you move in for the face, you're gonna see some interesting muscles, like I'll see if I can get in close. There's a muscle here, and this muscle is known as the masseter. The masseter actually runs from your zygomatic arch down to the ramus of your mandible, if you remember all that craziness. And the masseter, uh, I remember that he's masseter mass eater this actually elevates your jaw when you're chewing this muscle right here I think that's a number 12 on it that goes back and forth that is the rhizorius muscle the rhizorius muscle uh, rhizorius rhizor means laughter it's actually the laughter muscle it pulls the corner of your mouth back so that you can smile also right here we have a muscle called the depressor anguli oris now that's a whole lot to it but depressor means to depress to pull down anguli is referring to the angle of your mouth oris means mouth so it depresses the angle of the mouth it pulls it down this is a frowning muscle if we move up a ways we'll see some muscles along here and we'll see another muscle here this muscle right here let's get in real close that is the zygomatic muscle that's the zygomaticus major and the minor is just above it the zygomaticus major um, originates at the zygomatic bone which of course is the cheekbone and zygomaticus major 
what he does is he pulls up the side in the corner of your mouth. This is the muscle that um, Sylvester Stallone actually has a, a, a birth defect with. He has an actual uh, defect that doesn't allow him to be able to use that muscle. And that's why he kind of talks like this, you know what I'm saying? Where his lip is pulled up and curled. When we look around the eye, we see a large muscle. This large muscle is known as the orbicularis oculi. Orbicularis means circular shape. Oculi means eye. Now when you look in your lab manual, you'll notice that you have an orbicularis oculi external and an orbicularis oculi internal. The external, of course, is the one on the outside. And the internal is the one that you see that has a number seven on it. It goes around the eyelids. Their job is actually to close your eye. That's why you get the bags under your eyes when your eyes have been open for long periods of time. They get fatigued. Now if we rotate the head around like such, we'll see that he has a muscle that goes all the way around his lips and that muscle is known as the orbicularis oris. Orbicularis, remember, means circular shape. Oris means mouth. And so what it does is it puts your lips together so that you can whistle or give someone a kiss. The muscles located just below the lips, right here and right here, are known as mentalis muscles. And mentalis muscles are responsible for uh, drawing the skin on your chin together. So when you see certain actors or people who have a cleft chin, where they have that little dimple in their chin, that's because they have very strong mentalis muscles that are contracted. It's actually a genetic trait. You either have it or you don't. And if you have it, someone else in your family had it and you inherited it. Rotating the head and the neck again, there's a muscle located here and that entire muscle located here is known as the buccinator. And the buccinator, when you go back and you look at your uh, anatomical terms, you'll see that buccal means cheek. And so the buccinator is a muscle that pushes your cheeks away from your teeth when you chew. How many of you have ever been chewing and you bit the side of your cheek? That is not fun. This muscle is there to keep your cheek away from your teeth. Thank goodness. And up here, this very large fan-shaped muscle is known as the temporalis. Not to be confused with the temporal paratalis on the other side. This is the temporalis. And if you follow his tendon here, you'll see it goes behind the zygomatic, pro uh, zygomatic arch, excuse me, and it actually inserts into your mandible. He is responsible for helping to elevate your mandible when you chew. Now, if you haven't noticed already, for some strange reason, half of this model has a lot of red on it and the other half is missing a lot of red. And the reason for that is because one side of this model is deep and the other side is superficial. This side is what you would see if you removed the skin from somebody's head and face. And this side is what you would see after you removed the skin, fascia, and this layer of muscle this would be what would be uh, directly underneath. And so this side is deep and that side is superficial. Now if we continue with the neck, we look here, we'll see a really big long muscle known as the sternocleidomastoid. Real long name, very simple though. He's named for what he attaches to. Sterno, referring to the fact that part of the muscle attaches to the top of your sternum. Clido, referring that to the fact that part of this muscle is attaching to your clavicle. Mastoid, which means that it inserts into your mastoid process located behind your ear. Remember that knot that's located behind your ear on the temporal bone? Yep. Sterno, Clido, mastoid. And what it does is it helps to rotate your head and your neck. Speaking of rotating the head and the neck, we'll just continue rotating this on around and we can see a muscle located here. This is actually part of your trapezius muscle. Believe it or not, your trapezius muscle is a very large muscle. 
um, is located in the around the head, the neck, and your mid back. And this is what we would call the upper trap. And the upper trap also helps you to move your head and neck. Now, with this being the superficial side, we flip this around and we get to the deep side. And there's this weird muscle located right here. Do you see that? That muscle is known as the levator scapulae. His name kind of tells you what he does and what he attaches to. The levator scapulae inserts into your scapula and he levitates it, he lifts it. Levator scapulae, it elevates the scapula. It's your shoulder shrugging muscle. And last but not least, we have our muscles known as the scalenes. This is the anterior scalene, this is the middle scalene, and this is the posterior scalene. The scalene muscles allow you to be able to laterally flex your head and neck. So, you know, when you see the Charlie Brown dance, where the guy, you know, his head just kind of goes from side to side, that's what's pulling his head from side to side. It's these three muscles. However, the funny thing about these muscles is the fact that um, enforced, ex uh, enforced inhalation, when you're like running a marathon, these muscles will actually help to pull your ribs up so you can breathe better. And that's the muscles of the head and the neck.